When God says, I will restore, God means, I will restore. As we're coming to the end of the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord is encouraging us that even when we go astray, when our hearts turn back to Him, He welcomes us back and not only welcomes us back, but restores, whether it's us personally or the people of Israel, to the place and position that He has for them so that He can be glorified in all the earth. This is the Sabbath before Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, and it's an amazing time on the biblical calendar where Jews around the world are going to be gatherings in, gathering in synagogues and hearing the sound of the shofar. And today, as we open up the scriptures, Nathan, we get to read what's always read right before Rosh Hashanah. But can you just talk about Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, what does it mean to you as a non-Jewish person sure. who probably never went to synagogue and even heard those? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's kind of an amazing thing. And I love that you even have a burden uh, for these things. Yeah, I, I didn't grow up with those things, knew nothing about it. But uh, since the Lord put a burden in my heart for Israel and the Jewish people, a lot of the things that are important to God started being more important to me. Um, and so the feast, the holidays, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. Yeah. So kind of the new year yeah. uh, for the Jewish people in the Hebrew calendar. But it's interesting, in biblical times, it wasn't referred to as Rosh Hashanah. Right. It was referred to as Yom Tuah, the day of trumpets, the yeah. feast of trumpets. Yeah. Um, and so uh, biblically, uh, in, in Exodus, Deuteronomy, different passages, it tells us, Leviticus, excuse me, it tells us uh, that they're supposed to blow trumpets on this day to call a sacred assembly. It's a holy day. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say why. It doesn't mm -hmm. say what you're supposed to do other than it's a day of blowing trumpets. Mm -hmm. Makes me look to maybe a future fulfillment Come on. when Yeshua returns at the trumpet sound. Come on. Um, and so there's some thoughts there about how Jesus would fulfill the fall feasts. Yeah. But here we are, Rosh Hashanah, uh, head of the year, it's a new year, and we'll, it will begin a new Torah cycle as we're getting closer to finishing this up as we get to the High Holy Days, yeah. which is also exciting. Yeah, and by the way, I'm super excited about the upcoming year because not only will you and I be co-hosting, but we're going to have some special guests yeah. on the podcast doing particular sessions um, consecutively on the Torah readings. We're going to have Dr. Michael Brown. We're going to have Joshua Aaron. Amazing. We're going to have Joel Richardson. We're going to have Lee Cummings. Amazing. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And there's one other. Scott Volk. Scott Volk, <laughs> Nathan Smith, and, um, it, and, and others. So I'm, I'm just really super excited about this upcoming season. But as we're closing down this season, we're getting into an amazing section of Scripture. Today it's Deuteronomy 29, 10 to the end of 31. Why don't you dive in, bro, and uh, start us off? Yeah, so we start in verse nine. Carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may prosper in everything you do. Stop right there. Uh, oh, you were stopping right there. <laughs> Go, give me, what do you got? No, what no, you, 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 you're something's leaping out of your spirit. What you got? No, it's really interesting. God says, keep this covenant so that you may prosper in all that you do. Listen, God cares about prosperity. Of course. God cares about seeing us fulfilled, body, soul, yeah. and spirit. Yeah. And it's, I mean, there are people who prosper financially sure. who hate God. Yes. That's not the prosperity that God is talking about here. Keep the words of this covenant to do them that you may prosper in all that you do. Bro, true prosperity has very, very little to do with the amount of money we have in our bank account, right. but rather the amount of God we have in so our spirit. So and true. there is a method to prosperity. You wanna be prosper? God would that we would prosper and be in health even as our souls yeah. prosper. And the key to a prospering soul is being careful to do all that God tells us to do. And that that frames what Moses is giving. You know, Deuteronomy is like a speech, a sermon that Moses is giving. Yeah. It frames this idea of living in covenant with the Lord. And he's telling them the point of being in this covenant, the point of honoring the Lord and honoring these, 
you know, regulations, these things I'm asking you to do so that you would prosper, so that you would do well in the earth. It's, so good. it's God's heart for his people. Mm. And so, and we know anytime God wants his people prosperous, it's for the sake of being a blessing to others. Yeah. It's not so you can hoard it so that you can be a conduit of blessing. I love it. And that's how it starts. Verse 10, all of you are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God, your leaders, your chief men, your elders and officials, and all the other men of Israel together, I love this, with your children and your wives, watch this, and the foreigners living in your camps. He goes on to say, the Lord's making this covenant with you today to confirm it with you, uh, skipping down to 13, to be your God as he promised you and he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He tells them, I'm making this covenant with you today, so honor these things that I'm telling you mm. so that you can abide in that covenant yeah. and receive all the blessing of being in that covenant. Yeah. So goes on and reminds them, verse 18, hey, make sure that no one turns away from the Lord. Why does he say that? He says that because he wants them to walk in the blessing of being in relationship with God. It's not because he's scared. It's not because he's nervous. It's because he's like, this won't be good for you. Yeah. You won't receive the benefits of the covenant blessing if you walk away from me. Stay connected. And I think it's a beautiful picture of God's heart for us. And he just kind of expounds on that through the rest of the chapter. I got a crazy, um, I got a crazy message today on my Facebook Messenger. Okay. And um, it was from a guy who I knew 20 years ago and um, had a little bit of a relationship um, with him. And he ended up, when I say relationship, I mean, he was, he was somebody that was desiring to be a brother in our community. Yeah. We all moved up here together, but anyway, he went off the deep end. It, it's almost like we were entering this land. We were moving mm -hmm. to Charlotte. Anyway, listen to this. Hey, Scott, remember me? How have you been? So many great memories of you before I went off course. Wow. Had some dark years, mm. but been strong in Jesus again for a while. Wow. Much love to you and your family. I think that the enemy is out to derail us and it will cost us. If we choose to turn our back on God, it will cost us for years. And, and what the devil does is he tries to make it look alluring, go this way. But I love what you just said. I really believe it's not that God is this dictatorial sure. king, but he knows what's best yes. for us. And he he desires with everything inside of him. What's that verse that you just read? I'm just trying to 18. find it out. 18. So that there will not be among you a man or woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away today from the Lord to go in and serve the God of those nations. I am telling you, we are living in an hour where the gods of the nations are out to pluck us out. Yes. And God knows that. Yes. And God gives us free will and God allows us to choose. But he's saying, listen, you're about to go into your land. Yeah. You're about to go into your yes. destiny. Trust me, friends, there's gonna be things that are out to get you, yeah. but don't turn away from me. It's so important. And, and something that I think often snares people, we've got the whole deconstructionist movement, you yeah. got different things. And look, people go through things and it really rattles their faith. Yeah. It's my hope and prayer that God will use that to actually build their faith. Yeah. But the point is, if you skip down in chapter 29 to verse 29, uh, it says this, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may follow all the words of this law. Mm. One thing that I see a lot of people getting snared into that ultimately derails their faith is getting super absorbed in conspiracy, you know, super spiritual, you know, well, yeah. the hidden meaning behind the hidden meaning of the <laughs> hidden meaning. And the challenge of that is I'm all for, I, I, I've got a degree in biblical theological studies. I love studying in scripture, yeah. but it should produce life and fruit in relationship with yeah. God, yeah. not just make us more skeptical and hyped up on, you know, new ideas and whatever else. 
a lot of people are always looking for the hidden secret, hidden secret. Yep. And I love this verse. The secret things belong to the Lord. If he hasn't made it clear to you, maybe there's a reason. Mm. Maybe we know his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the revealed things belong to us and our children forever that we may follow all the words of the law. Yeah. So you know what? Let's put into practice the things that we do understand. Mm. Mm. I have a hard enough time with love your neighbor as yourself. I need to make sure I'm practicing that in my daily yeah. life yeah, yeah, before yeah. I get too far down the road in the secret hidden whatever. It's important that we live this out. So just practical wisdom, mm -hmm. social order, in kingdom lifestyle and Moses is laying it out for the people of Israel. I love it. And then we get right to chapter 30 and the heading for my chapter, I don't know what it says for yours, but it says restoration promised. Love it. Restoration, putting things back into the order that God intended. Just listen to this. So it shall be verse one, when all these things have come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind in all the nations where the Lord your God has banished you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey him with all your heart and soul according to all that I command you today, you and your sons, then the Lord your God will restore you. It's like God seeing into the future. He says, and we talked about it, don't turn away to the other gods. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. But I love you enough mm -hmm. that even when you do it, I will restore you from so captivity good. and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. Wait a second. He hasn't even scattered him yet. God is seeing into yes. the future. And uh, look at verse five. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed. You shall possess it. He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. Verse six. Moreover, the Lord your God will circumcise you your heart. Listen, this isn't talking about what's going to happen when he ent when they enter the land now. God says in the prophets, I'm going to bring you back. Yeah. And then when I bring you back after you're scattered to the nations because you disobeyed me, then now not only will you be circumcised in the flesh, but you'll be circumcised in the heart. Listen, I just want to read a couple of verses from uh, the book of Jeremiah. Um, just promises of restoration. And interestingly, Nathan, think about it. The last question that Jesus was asked by his disciples before he ascends to heaven is, are you now going to restore mm -hmm. Israel? Yes. Are you now going to restore? Because you promised it. It was in the heart of every follower of Jesus. And I just want to talk about restoration for a minute. Listen to these verses in Jeremiah 29, 14. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes. Jeremiah 30, verse 3. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. I will restore you to health. Behold, I will restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob. Over and over, Jeremiah 31. Um, the word of the Lord uh, in the land of Judah and in the cities when I restore their fortunes. Jeremiah 32, I will restore their fortunes. Jeremiah 33, I will restore the fortunes of the land. Jeremiah 33, again, I will restore their fortunes. I mean, over and over and over again, the scriptures say, I will restore. When God says, I will once, we should take notice. When he says, I will over and over and over and over again, I think he's making a point yes. that it's going to be hard for you to think that it's ever possible, but I will do it. The restoration of Israel is a theme, I think, in my heart right now because it seems utterly and completely yeah. impossible mm -hmm. that Israel is going to be restored because they have done, unfortunately, what Deuteronomy told them not to do. Yeah. They've turned away, but a day is coming, yes. bro, when Israel will be the glory of God magnified to the nations. So chapter 30, the restoration promise to Israel is just a beautiful theme to me because God's desire is to restore. It's his desire. And Scott, you know, it, it segues halfway through this chapter to really Moses almost given this parental fatherly advice. He says this in 11. Now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. I love this. Mm. He's saying, look, um, here's the covenant promises. Walk with the Lord. 
Yeah. Don't serve other gods. This is not hard. Mm-hmm. I, this is not impossible. This is not, I'm not asking you to stand on your head and do all that. I just want you to walk in the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. Right? Here's what he says, 12. It's not up in heaven, so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven and get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. 13. Nor is it beyond the sea, so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. 14. No, the word is very near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart so you may obey it. Mm. Moses is saying, I'm making this, the Lord, through me, this Moses speaking, I've made it as clear as possible, Mm. and I've given you everything you need to succeed. This is not hard. Just walk with me in relationship. I love it. Then he says, I've put before you today life and death, and a very famous verse many will know from Deuteronomy 30. uh, If you come down to verse 19, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I've set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now, choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, hold fast to him for the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to Mm. give you to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Lord is your life. Come on. I mean, honestly, Uh, You can't have a more clear picture of, hey, people, your lifeline is the Lord your God. So good. Tether yourself to Him. Everything else is secondary. And if you do, you walk in the blessing. And if you don't, you're choosing death. Yeah. Amazing, bro. And and it's so interesting to me that this particular portion ends with Joshua. Talking about Joshua and you know, just on the heels of the choose life, there were 12 spies back in the book of Numbers that were sent to spy out the land to Joshua and Caleb come back with a life-giving report. The other 10 spies did not choose life. They chose what looked like was apparent death because there were giants in the land. When we choose life, we choose God's report. Mm -hmm. We don't choose what we see with our eyes. We choose what we know in our hearts is from the Lord. And in uh, chapter 31, verse 23, this is Moses coming to the end of this particular portion, says, Then he commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the sons of Israel into the land which I swore to them, and I will be with you. Wow. Um, If there's one person that I think should have brought the sons of Israel into into the promised land, it's probably Moses. It's probably Moses. But we all remember what happened when Moses misrepresented God to the people by striking the rock instead of speaking to it, which we talked about in a previous podcast. So this is is both beautiful and, and sad to me that Moses isn't bringing the people in, but it seems like, um, it seems like he's proud in in a fatherly way of his son, Joshua, who was first his servant and now is going to be the one to bring the people into the land of, uh, into the promised land. Verse 30, then Moses spoke in the hearing of all the assembly of Israel, the words of this song until they were complete. Next week, we're going to talk about our final podcast of the season, the Song of Moses. But any any closing thoughts before we, we shut this down? As we're getting close to the end here, we're hearing Moses kind of give his farewell speech in chapter 31, if you read the whole chapter. Yeah. Uh, and you alluded to this handoff to Joshua, who's taking the people into the promised land. Yeah. Just often been reminded as, as the Lord's highlighted these things to me in the last few years, you know, Moses is a, is a picture of the law. Uh, He represents the law in so many ways. And the law was sufficient to identify the people of Israel. The law was sufficient to get them out of bondage and to identify them as God's chosen people and brought them to the threshold of the promised land. But it was Joshua who had to take them in. And Joshua, Yehoshua, right? We get the name Yeshua from Yehoshua, Mm -hmm. the, the one of salvation. It's a picture that the law takes you so far, but then we need Jesus to lead us Mm. into the promise of life. Mm, So good. It's valuable, it's beautiful, and I think it's an opportunity for us to see again 
how God's heart for his people is that they would know him yeah. and they would walk in the freeness, uh, the, the fullness and the freedom of life. I love it, Nathan. And I love also that you have been with us on this journey through the season. We have one podcast left before we finish the season. It's amazing because it seems like just yesterday we opened up to Genesis chapter one, and we're going to be doing that again in just a few weeks from now. If, if these podcasts have been a blessing to you, can I encourage you? share them with your friends. We, we put out a weekly newsletter that I think would really encourage you. They coincide not only with the podcast, but also with current events. And they're an encouragement to you so that you can be praying um, with understanding with regard to the situations in Israel. If you're not um, receiving those emails, you can write to us at info at togetherforisrael.org and say, please sign me up for the newsletter. That would be amazing. And we'd love to be in touch with you weekly. You can uh, download our app and get current events uh, where Together for Israel is concerned and a bunch of free material there. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can uh, follow us on Instagram at Together for Israel and uh, One Minute for Israel where we take one minute a day and we focus in on praying for the peace of Jerusalem. I love you. I'm so thankful for you. Look forward to next week when we close out this amazing season of Portions Podcast.